Hey everybody, it's your old pal Glenn Fricker here with another exciting episode of SMG Viewers Comments. This is my weekly show where I try and answer your comments and questions to the best of my ability. Now, before we get started, if you could all do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, that would be a huge help in building my audience and getting the word out. Anyway, let's get right to it. For an absolute noob, what's a plugin? Also, fuck you, Glenn, and greetings from England. Well, that's not a very nice thing to say now, is it, Mr. Nightwolf? Now, to spell it out, a plugin is simply a software program that plugs in virtually into whatever recording software you're using. If you go into, say, Reaper or Pro Tools or whatnot, you go on the effects bar and you can pull that up, you'll get a list of what are called plugins. These are made by third party manufacturers and can do all sorts of neat things like equalizer, compression, reverb. And if you're into making modern music, there's things like pitch correction for destroying the singer and drum sample replacement. So you'll never ever have to hear a real live drummer ever again. Isn't modern music wonderful? Once you brought in the hockey stick, I became much, much happier. Music related to a degree, but what is your number one album cover art of all time? Like, what do you think is the coolest, best looking? Well, I definitely have to go with Judas Priest's Sad Wings of Destiny. This is a picture of a nice young man who obviously disappointed his mother at some point and now is spending an eternity in hell for it. Remember kids, if you don't love Jesus back, you could wind up like this guy for all eternity. Actually, Glenn, you managed to get some decent tones here. Wow, ha ha ha. Well, that certainly never fails. I say I don't like something, you guys love it. I say I love something, you guys hate it. It's reverse confirmation bias. Boy, I love making videos for you guys. You're awesome. Don't worry about the bad amp thing if you still play it like a beginner though. Amps don't fix your playing. Mr. Abomination, that is absolutely true. I couldn't agree anymore. Buying more expensive gear certainly isn't going to affect any problems you have in your playing. It will put you into debt, however. People are so focused on gear because they think it substitutes practice. The reason I suck is because I don't have a $4,000 guitar. No! The reason you suck is because you'd rather watch TV or get drunk than to practice. Again, I gotta say, you guys are knocking it out of the park. If you're sleeping in and not practicing, guess what? You're not getting better. If you're wasting your time in front of a television, you're not getting better. This is absolutely true. There is no instant rock star button. If you want it, you have to work for it and you have to make priority choices with your time. Best of luck though. Hi Glenn, love the channel. How do you mix kick drums? Do you use sound replacer or just EQ compressor on the live kick? Keep up the good videos. Cheers from Sweden. Now, if I were to use sound replacer, that would make me a very naughty boy now, wouldn't it? The truth is I use two microphones, one from Earthworks and another one from Solomon called the Lofree. I combine these in software with a program, a plugin, like I mentioned earlier, called Drum Leveler from Sound Radix. And you know what? Gosh darn it, the results are pretty good now, aren't they? Today's video is brought to you by those nice people over at Vikings War of Clans. It was inspired by awesome strategy games from the 90s, like Civilization and if you're really old like me, Dune 2. These were the games that we all loved and were so intense and they were so involved that the bass players had no idea what was going on. Vikings is a mobile game that takes the intensity to the next level with 20 million players online that are constantly changing the way the game evolves by fighting over resources, forging new alliances and competing in live events. You guys can support my channel by downloading Vikings onto your mobile device for absolutely free from the link in the description below. You'll get a special bonus of 200 gold coins and a protective shield. Don't forget to look for me online and join my Vikings clan under the name NiceGuy666. Get online today and have a happy war. Do loudness wars. Okay, you asked for it. Okay, that was my first shot. Your turn. Glenn, I got really fucking pissed off. Not at you though, when you mentioned that the Digitech RP360 Multi-FX pedal had crappy distortion. You were right! So I bitched and complained about it to my drummer and now there is a Line 6 Helix sitting in front of me because he went over to Long McQuaid and bought one. Thank you. Wow, is that ever neat. You know, I'm not a big fan of the Line 6 products, but I have to admit that the Helix is actually pretty gosh darn good. And I'm gonna ask the question that I'm sure all of us are wondering right now. How in the heck did you ever find a drummer that has money? I thought it sounded all right. Can someone explain why it sucks? Is it just an opinion on the tone? Well, chances are, if you're listening on one of these, you're never gonna be able to tell the difference. I'd highly recommend buying some decent speakers and then listening to some records that weren't made in the copy paste generation so you can actually understand what music is. You know, recently, every time I watch one of your vids, a Get Good Drums commercial plays. Why would they want to sponsor your sample drums hating channel? 
Well, here's the thing. I don't actually hate sampled drums. I understand most guys out there are working in their bedrooms and just simply don't have access to a large studio, expensive drum mics, expensive drum sets, and then a drummer who can actually play them well. I understand that that might be kind of difficult for most people to get, get hold of. So yes, in this case, get good drums. Advertising on my channel makes all kinds of sense. And for you guys out there making metal by any means necessary, you keep doing what you're doing. Hey, as a producer, how much high-level guitar playing do you play on a day-to-day -day basis? Blah, 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 blah. Basically, is it really necessary for me to be trained to be a prodigy just to be a decent producer? The short answer is no. I don't really get to practice guitar very much anymore at all. Having a basic understanding of music is a big help. Listening to a lot of music is a big help. Listening to music from all sorts of different genres is a very, very big help. But no, you don't have to be a shred prodigy to make records. Not at all. And my suggestion is, if your high school truly requires you to take intense guitar playing courses just to be able to take the audio production course, that you skip those classes and learn on your own at home, because you're going to learn more anyway. Ever recorded any violins or cellos? Was interested to see what kind of setup you would recommend. Actually, yes, I've recorded a lot of Celtic bands in my past. That's basically Irish folk music, and it's very popular in my local area. And they're a lot of they're a lot of fun to do. Um, I had a hard time learning how to record violin because it's got a lot of high frequency information, and condenser mics might not be the best choice. I wound up going with ribbon mics instead, kind of over the shoulder, back behind the the player to get a fatter sound and it worked out quite well. These days I'm using a Rode NTR and they are absolutely fantastic. I'm a bass player and thank you for making it simple. Well, somebody had to do it. Glad when I mix heavy shit, new jack, hardcore bands and such, I use some of your songs as reference mixes. However, most of the time I'm mixing punk bands and the drop tune seven string metal song won't really do much. Can you direct me some etude standard punk that you did? At this point, mostly use bad religion from the late 90s, early 2Ks and propaganda, but those are still somewhat different from more straight with punk thing. BR is kind of poppy, instrumentally propaganda. I love them. I need something that sort of sounds like what you get from bands, like Conflict of Stiff Little Fingers from Shit Shan 69. What do you remember? Hey guys, Adam Rainstar, a big fan of the channel. He's been a follower for years. Always happy to hear from Adam. Unfortunately, Adam, I really haven't done any punk bands in about 10 years. Um, a rival studio opened up that kind of did the punk thing a little better than me, and I've got no problem admitting that whatsoever. Metal is my first love. I've done a lot of pop punk in the late 90s and early 2000s, but none of it in terms of production is really all that great, not compared to what I can put out these days. Thanks for asking, though. Um, honestly... I really don't know where to point it because punk's not really my thing. Um, Blink-182, those mixes sounded fantastic. Maybe check out some of the... What you can do is check out some mixes from my good buddy Cameron Webb down in Southern California and check out some of the NoFX stuff that he's done recently. That's pretty fun. Hi, Glenn. I received three stereo audio files from different sources of a live king. Now, the problem I have is that after aligning them to the first snare hit, one of the audio data was about 45 seconds longer at the end, and I don't know how to align the others so they are in sync from the beginning to the end. Is the cause related to the bitrate, individual recording equipment, or what could have been this? Two, how to fix this in Reaper. Well, I can't really hypothesize what the cause would have been without knowing what kind of equipment was being used. It could very well have been different sample rates things were recorded at on different recorders. That could very well be. Maybe one was at 48 kilohertz, the other one was at 44.1 kilohertz. That, that might explain a thing or two. So you might want to check the source sound files and see what the sample rates are. And if one's at a different sample rate than the other, you want to convert everything to the same sample rate before you load those files in the Reaper. And if that doesn't work, you can use Audio Stretch. It's something I use to do my viewers' comments episodes every single week where I stretch and compress my sound going through this mic up here. And all I do is I uncheck a little box that says preserve pitch. What you would do was stretch the second track out to match the first and leave that little box checked. And it works like a charm. Good luck. Okay, everybody, that was a super swell show. I'm so glad you watched it. If you can, please hit the subscribe button and download Viking War of Clans. See you next time.